We've got plenty more information on the upcoming Apple iPhone 12 and I'll be sharing the details right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter by clicking the links in the description. At the beginning of the week, we had plenty of news about the Apple iPhone 12 range and the new Apple Glass and today we've got even more. We've got information on Apple Glass design as well as the iPhone 12's cameras and their displays. Before we get into it though, please like the video if you're looking forward to the iPhone 12 and let me know in the comments what model you want the most. So we'll start with the Apple Glass and get that out of the way. We had lots of information from John Prosser including the design and the prices of the upcoming Apple Glass and it now turns out that Apple's working on a Steve Jobs limited edition that's going to look like the round frameless glasses that he was famous for wearing. They're also expected to come with a huge price tag so great news if that's your style and you've got plenty of cash but if not we've got the normal Apple Glass. For those interested in the normal glasses, there's a video of a prototype but it's currently unable to be shared as apparently Apple have made multiple colours so showing the video could lead them to the source of the leak. We do however have some information from John Prosser who has seen the glasses and he says that they're slick as hell. He says they're similar to the classic Ray-Ban Wayfarers as well as the glasses we also see Tim Cook wearing. Interestingly enough though, Mark Gurman who many of you will have heard of from Apple Apple information in the past has claimed that John Prosser's stories are complete fiction. This led to a few back and forward comments between the two on Twitter and Mr. German believes that there has been some confusion and what John Prosser is talking about is the mixed AR VR headset that we'll be seeing at the start of next year. Now with the Apple Glass out of the way, we can focus on the much awaited Apple iPhone 12. There's been a huge amount of leaks being thrown at us so today we're going to be focusing on the cameras and the displays. If we start with the iPhone 12 display, there was a bit of confusion last week and many people disagreeing in my comments on the smallest iPhone and there was good reason. It was my fault for not explaining it properly in the video so we're going to quickly run through it. In my last video I told you that the 5.4 inch iPhone 12 is going to have a 60Hz OLED display made from Samsung. Now this wasn't wrong, it's just information from another source. The information comes from Ross Young who's CEO of Display Supply Chain Consultants and he's providing us with many display leaks for lots of different phones. Of course the other leak and the one people were commenting on is from John Prosser and he states that the 5.4 inch iPhone 12 is going to be a display from BOE. Now John Prosser has been incredibly accurate lately so who knows who is correct but to be fair at this time it doesn't really matter. They both agree that it's a 5.4 inch OLED on the smallest iPhone 12 so the manufacturer is a little bit irrelevant at this stage. Finally though we've got some information on the cameras which further confirms the previous leaks we've talked about. The leaks state that the two more budget friendly iPhones are going to have dual cameras and that the two premium models will be triple cameras along with an additional LiDAR sensor. Sir. Sharp and O-Film have reportedly landed the orders on the two lower end modules and reports are stating that they are going to be a dual camera setup. They're reportedly expected to be hitting 50 to 55 million units this year and apparently Sharp are going to be doing 60 to 70 percent of those shipments with O-Film filling out the 30 to 40 percent and production is to begin in July. For the two higher end models it seems LG have acquired that contract and they're going to be producing all of them which is expected to be 35 to 40 million units this year. Again reports are suggesting that LG have got the triple camera setup with the additional LiDAR sensor. We've also got reports that there's going to be a new true depth camera on the front and this is said to be a reduced size to the previous one and will help reduce the size of the notch on the front. So again this confirms that we will still have a notch but it's going to be a smaller one. Now for those of you that want detailed specs for each of the devices, we've already had the information so I'm going to run through all four models of the iPhone 12. So to start with, we've got the entry level model of the Apple iPhone 12 and this is of course going to be called the iPhone 12. It's a 5.4 inch iPhone with an OLED Super Retina display from Samsung. Now it's important to note straight off the bat that Super Retina means absolutely nothing so don't get too caught up on that. But it's going to be an OLED display at a resolution of 2340 by 1080 which gives us 475 pixels per inch and it has an 8-bit color depth. 
While there have been rumors of all models having a 120Hz display, unfortunately this model is 60Hz only. It's going to be equipped with 4GB of RAM and a choice of 128 or 256 storage and it's made of an aluminium body and of course uses the A14 Bionic with 5G support. The iPhone 12 comes with a dual camera setup on the rear and it will of course be shipping with iOS 14. For those of you that want the iPhone 12 with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 storage, it's going to be launching at $649. If you want 4 gigs of RAM and 256 storage, it's $749. Next up, we've got the iPhone 12 Max. To be clear, this is the Max and not the Pro Max. The iPhone 12 Max has a 6.1 inch OLED display. This is again a Super Retina OLED display, but provided by Chinese manufacturer BOE. It comes with a resolution of 2532 by 1170, and this gives us 460 pixels per inch, and it has an 8 bit color depth. We get 4 gigs of RAM and a choice of 128 or 256 storage and of course the iPhone 12 Max is powered by the A14 Bionic chip. It's in an aluminium body, it's got 5G connectivity and we get another dual camera setup on the rear. For those of you that want the 128 gig version of the iPhone 12 Max, it's going to be launching at $749 and if you want the 256 gig version, it rises to 849 Next up, we've got the iPhone 12 Pro. The iPhone 12 Pro has a 6.1 inch display, so it's actually the same size as the iPhone 12 Max, but we've got an improved display and specs. On the iPhone 12 Pro, we've got a 6.1 inch Super Retina display with ProMotion and a 10 bit color depth. The display is manufactured by Samsung and it's got a resolution of 2532 by 1170, which gives us 460 pixels per inch, and it is, of course, a 120 hertz display. The iPhone 12 Pro comes with 6 gigs of RAM and a choice of 128, 256 or even 512 internal storage. It of course ships with Apple's A14 Bionic and the iPhone 12 Pro is 5G compatible. It comes in a stainless steel body and on the rear we get a triple camera setup along with a LiDAR sensor for the depth. For the 128 gig iPhone 12 Pro, it's launching at $999. For 256 gigs, it's $1,099. And for those that want the 512 gig iPhone 12 Pro, it's $1,299. Last but not least, we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The iPhone 12 Pro Max comes with a 6.7 inch OLED display. Again, it's a Super Retina with ProMotion, 10 bit color depth, and of course, it is manufactured by Samsung. It's got a resolution of 2778 by 1284, giving us 458 pixels per inch, and again, it's a 120 hertz display. It comes with 6 gigs of RAM and a choice of 128, 256 or 512 storage. It's in a stainless steel body and the iPhone 12 Pro Max is of course powered by the A14 Bionic with 5G support. Just like the iPhone 12 Pro, we get a triple camera setup on the rear along with the additional LiDAR sensor. For those of you that want the 128 gig iPhone 12 Pro Max, it's launching at $1,099. If you want the 256 gig version, it's $1,199. And for those that want the most expensive in the range, the 512 gig iPhone 12 Pro Max, it's launching at a whopping $1,399. Of course, there's plenty more information on the Apple iPhone 12, so we're going to run through it all now. For my regular viewers, you guys would have already seen this, so just switch off now. But for anyone new here, make sure you hit that subscribe and we're going to get right into it. We're expecting to get four new iPhone 12s in the range, which is going to be two different iPhone 12s, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We're expecting Apple to increase the display sizes on the most premium models, although those who want a smaller display are still going to have an option. Reliable analyst Ming-Chi Kuo has advised that there's going to be two iPhone 12 versions. The smaller iPhone 12 is going to have a 5.4 inch display and the larger one will have a 6.1 inch. We then get a 6.1 inch display which is the iPhone 12 Pro and a 6.7 inch display which is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. 
Unlike last year, however, all models are reportedly going to be using an OLED display and the resolution will differ across the range. The 6.1 inch iPhone 12 will likely have a lower resolution than the 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro. And while there are rumors of Apple removing the notch, I really can't see this happening. In typical Apple fashion, we're still expecting a full screen display with a notch top center. It's too early for in display camera sensors and I can't see Apple going for a punch hole. They also need a time of flight sensor on the front for their 3D face unlock. And while Apple did ditch the fingerprint scanner on the iPhone 10, there are reports that it's going to be coming back in the form of an in display fingerprint scanner. There are reports suggesting that Apple are also going to be increasing their refresh rates on the latest displays. While most phones have stuck to 60Hz displays, it's been changing recently and Apple are also going to be joining this trend. At this stage, we don't know if they're going to be using 90Hz, 120Hz or even a mixture of the two across the range. When it comes to the rear of the device, we're expecting a similar camera setup to last year, but the more premium model will have more cameras. Ming-Chi Kuo has again advised that both the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max are going to be adding time-of-flight cameras to the rear. For those unaware, time-of-flight cameras are 3D depth cameras and then what Apple uses on the front for the 3D face unlock. The time-of-flight sensors on the rear, however, use slightly different technology that allow it to map 3D objects from further away. This significantly improves augmented reality applications and allows for more improved portrait style photo and video effects. We're likely going to see slight upgrades on the other cameras of the iPhone 12s, but given the great performance in its predecessor, they won't be changing things too much. Reports are suggesting that the two more budget models are going to have a dual camera setup, while the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max are going to have a quad camera setup with the inclusion of the 3D depth camera. The iPhone 12 is of course going to be powered by the new A14 Bionic processor. This is actually manufactured using 5 nanometer lithography which will bring significant improvements and there's a good chance that it will be the first 5 nanometer chipset to hit the market. When it comes to RAM, the iPhone 12 Pro Max is expected to come with 6 gigs of RAM while the standard iPhone 12 will only have 4. This is something that I think Apple actually do well compared to Android manufacturers where they throw in unnecessarily large amount of memories causing the consumer to pay for memory that they don't even need. When it comes to storage, you're expecting a choice of 64, 256 or 512 gigs of internal storage. For the first time ever, consumers felt Apple did a great job in prioritizing the battery life on the predecessor, so hopefully that's something that's going to continue with the iPhone 12. While graphene batteries are still out of the question, we can expect a 5.4 inch iPhone 12 to be around 2800 mAh, the 6.1 inch is probably going to be around 3150 and the 6.7 inch should contain around a 4300 mAh battery. One thing that is a little unknown at the moment is of course 5G connectivity. Apple are very bad when it comes to 5G thanks to earlier issues with Qualcomm, so we're unsure at this stage if that's something we will see in the iPhone 12. It's rumored that the iPhone 12 is going to have 5G connectivity, but there aren't actually any leaks or reports to back that up. The iPhone 12 is going to be IP68 water resistant and it's of course going to ship with iOS 14. Now when it comes to the price, people wanted lower prices and that's exactly what we're getting. Apple surprised us last time, they surprised us again with the iPhone SE and now the iPhone 12 is going to be the same. We'll be getting the base 5.4 inch iPhone 12 starting at $649, the iPhone 12 6.1 inch at $749, the iPhone 12 Pro 6.1 inch at $999 and finally the iPhone 12 Pro Max 6.1 7 inch phone at $1,099. Some very reasonable prices from Apple who have clearly been focusing on keeping the cost down. Of course, it's not all about specs and we're likely going to see some new software features or improvements to the current features in iOS 14. The iPhone 12 is set to launch in September as always and it's always around the second week they release so we can expect to see the iPhone 12 range on either the 8th or the 15th of September and the iPhone 12 will be released about 10 days afterwards. Of course being so far away these are leaks and rumors but as more information comes to light I'll be sharing with you guys straight away. 
As always though, I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. Who out there is waiting for the Apple iPhone 12 and what model are you waiting for? But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash the thumbs up. If you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.